Hey guys, it's Unfrequented World Photography and uh, today I want to do a video on something I've been uh, thinking about for a long time, about four years, and that's I want to show you guys the difference in quality between a full frame camera and an APS-C camera. There's a lot of talk and discussion about depth of field and field of view and all that, and yes, they are completely different, but there's something that gets overlooked a lot, and that's the quality of the shot, the detail that's captured by my full frame versus my APS-C. There's no competition. Uh, we're not going to be subjective. We're going to just say, hey, here's a fact, and I'm going to show you this camera, full frame, will capture a lot more detail. One thing that could be subjective is my opinion on how much detail is gathered. And I'm going to go ahead and say that I figure it's somewhere about 30%. It's quite a bit more detail, so one third more uh, detail captured. We're going to use some uh, high end glass. I've got uh, Sigma 105 macro lens, uh, Tokina 300 f4. Uh, some other Sony lenses. We'll just throw a bunch of them on the cameras. We'll use a tripod and we'll uh, set up exact same... Uh, I'll, I'll probably try to match the focal length where I can if we use a zoom. And I'll show you guys, you're going to be astounded at how much more detail a full frame camera captures than an APS-C. So let's get started. Okay, so there is the A99 with the 105 macro uh, mounted on it. And we're going to use the video tripod head simply because I have two mounts for it, so it's going to make switching cameras. And here's the a 77 II. We'll switch uh, back and forth on the same tripod. We'll find some different subjects. Uh, unfortunately, with the prime lens, we're not going to be able to match uh, field of view. So you're going to get 105 on the full frame and 150 on this. But you're still going to be uh, blown away with the amount of detail captured by the full frame versus this one. Don't get me wrong, APS-C has its use and its place. Uh, I use this for sports, fast action, and anything long distance. So I put long lenses on there and I shoot birds and nature and all that. And I shoot my kids sports games with this because the autofocus is a lot faster than the original A99. Um, and it gets much more reach. So if you have a 300 millimeter lens, you put it on here, it becomes a 450. So uh, in terms of field of view. So, And the shots do have enough quality that they look fantastic. But what I want to show you is the difference captured on the sensor between those two cameras. Okay, so just to show you guys, uh, we're gonna repeat the same setup on the other camera. We're gonna use a two second timer, and we're gonna focus on the exact same uh, position for both lenses. Okay, so we've got the a 77 II mounted on there with the same settings, and I had to move the tripod back, and I used my A99 as reference to uh, what we had in view and where it was. And so we're gonna go ahead and take the photo now. And we'll have two that we can compare and we're just going to repeat this over a bunch of different tests and then we'll look at the images close up. Okay guys, here we are at the computer and um, I found a bit of a problem with our test uh, already. By moving the tripod, uh, I've got to um, kind of rotate these around and, and the field of view uh, is slightly off and the angle is slightly off. My point uh, of showing you the detail is going to work. Um, so you're going to have to take this with a grain of salt, but we're going to do the next test with the two lenses, a 300 millimeter mounted on the tripod. We're not going to move the tripod and uh, everything will line up perfectly in Photoshop. But I just want to show you guys, this is exactly what I'm talking about. Here's the A99 zoomed in at 100%. Look at the nice crisp detail from the macro lens. Now I've tried to line up the A77 II shot as best I can and it's going to be at 90%. And there's 90%. Look at all the detail that we lose in the threads here in the middle. If we go back, those threads are razor sharp. Here it's kind of got a bit of a wash out. Uh, the detail just isn't being captured. And I'm going to put these right in the video so you guys can see them at 100% uh, as well. But this is exactly what we're talking about. Look at the detail on that compared to the detail on that. Test number two is going to be run with the Tokina 300 f4 and we're going to run it at f8 on the a77 and we're going to shoot uh, 100 yards across the way. My neighbor has a brick chimney and a brick stanchion on his driveway and we're going to pick one of those and uh, target it and take two shots and you guys are going to see as well that at long distances the same effect applies. I'm also going to show you guys, uh, or I should mention, sorry, that all of my lenses are micro adjusted for each camera. So all the lenses we're using today have been uh, set up to perform as 
in their best range on each camera. So. Okay, now we're gonna do the A99. Okay, here we are back at the computer with the test shots lined up. So the only thing with doing this on the tripod with the Prime and the APS-C versus full frame is that we've got to show them at different uh, percentages. So that actually leads in effect to a little bit of a disadvantage for the A99 because we've got to view it at 120% to get it to line up with the A77 which we view at 80%. So keep in mind, uh, the A99 is still going to show you more detail here but we're viewing it a little more zoomed in. So there's the A99, there's the A77. Might be very hard to tell on the video here. Very close. A99 just has more detail. And you can see in the branches, uh, back here the A77, you can still see between those branches and keeping in mind, we're pixel peeping. So when you zoom out and view these photos large, you won't notice too much difference. Um, in fine portrait work and things where you want an eye razor sharp, you might notice a difference. And in macro work, you'll notice a difference. But with a long lens, um, unless you're within 10 feet of a bird and you want to show the very super fine detail, uh, the A77 II is a great camera. It'll get you in a little closer to fill the frame you're just going to have less detail. But quite often, you can't get close enough with the full frame. You've got to buy a very expensive lens to do that. So there are trade-offs. They're both great. I'm not knocking either of these cameras. I'm just showing you the difference that the A99 full frame captures a lot more detail than the A77. Okay, guys, for the next test, we're going to totally remove autofocus from this uh, scene, even though in real life, that's how I'm shooting is 90% of the time I'm in autofocus mode. But we're going to break out the old guns. This is a uh, Tamron uh, Adaptol. It's the 7210 19AH. Highly regarded, very sharp, has a macro close feature on it. We'll mount this onto each of the cameras and we'll do a manual test on uh, a spring or something we'll find that's close up. Uh, I've actually got an idea I'll show you guys. And that'll eliminate if you think there's a focus error or something going on, there isn't. So we'll just uh, manually focus the next test. And I forgot to mention too that this test comes about, I have never done this test with this camera. You guys are seeing the same results that I'm seeing. Where I first noticed this was um, over four years ago with my original a 77 one And I was doing some macro work for a client and I uh, something happened and I had to switch from my full frame to the a 77 one And I noticed right away, oh, these shots are not going to cut you know, they're not the same quality as what I was getting with the full frame. And that's where I noticed this issue. And I did a bunch of testing back in the day. So today the results you guys are seeing on the a 77 II are the first time I'm seeing these results as well. I've never compared these two. So keep that in mind as well. Okay, so there's the old girl set up in all her, her glory. Um, focus peaking is on. You can see the red there. And uh, we're going to shoot, like I said, a spring. So away we go. We've got an absolute amazing coincidence occurring here. Both these cameras, one is four years old, one is now a year and a half, uh, almost two years old, and they've both rolled over the SD cards that they've had. They go up to 10,000, and look at these file numbers. They're both shooting the exact same file number now. I had to uh, copy the one from the 77.2 and rename it to number version 2. They're both on the exact same file number. I just thought that's a Pretty cool coincidence to show you guys out of all the thousands and thousands of shots I've taken with these cameras that they've ended up on the same uh, number after multiple rollovers. So anyway, <laughs> and here we go back at the computer. So there's the A99 on the door spring. And there's the A77 too. And actually in this shot here, I'm not noticing as much uh, of a loss of detail. Here's a, it's very fine detail. You can pick up a little more dust in the A99. Uh, dust that's on the spring, that is. But it's a, it's a hard shot to tell the difference. Okay, so for the last test, we're going to use the uh, 105 Macro again. We're going to do a movie shelf test. I've lined them up uh, using the viewfinder on the 99. And we're going to see what it looks like. Okay, guys, back at the computer. Um, here's the full shot with the 105 Macro. And we're going to scroll down into the corner. I shot these at f8. 
and we're gonna go down in here to 100% and we're gonna view, line them up and we'll view down here in the bottom left corner, okay? All right, so I just wanted you guys to know that it is sharp all the way across the frame with that lens. We could have picked any of the four corners. We just picked the bottom one, yeah, just arbitrarily. But I wanna show you guys, this really shows again what the first image we did shows and that is a ton more detail from the A99. If you look at Will Smith's face there on the left and you watch that, when we switch over to the A77 II, which we'll do right now, getting a reflection, but look around uh, underneath the reflection there. You can see the A77 II, everything is smoothed out. If you look over here, uh, the fine detail in the uh, crossfire type right on the edge of it, that's A99. A77 II, it's just all smoothed out. I mean, you can still read everything and it's very sharp, but the A99 does a much better job. Pixel, uh, pixels on that camera are much larger. They allow much more light and therefore much more detail. And you will notice it if you're a pixel peeper or if you're um, doing fine macro work for somebody or portraiture where you need that eye absolutely 100% detailed and sharp. Uh, the full frame camera is going to benefit you 100%. So there you guys have it. One more reason to uh, pick up that full frame camera if you're into uh, detailed work, macro and things like that. Uh, don't take my word for it. Go out, drop another three grand on a camera and test it out yourselves. But I hope my uh, images here uh, do show the difference and it's across the board. It's not just the a77 II. That is a fantastic camera. Uh, the a77 was the same. Uh, my a550 was the same. Even worse, because the older cameras didn't have the, uh, they didn't collect the detail that the new ones do. But uh, the a77 II is a fantabulous camera, no doubt about it. I think I just made up a word there, but it is a great camera and I use it all the time. It just, they have diff different uses. Uh, if you need to get more reach, you use the APS-C. If you need a faster focusing system, in my case, uh, the, the new a99 II apparently will give the a77 II a run for its money, but... I'm not dropping another four grand on a camera yet. So anyway, I hope this uh, comparison showed you guys, uh, uh, filled you in, gave you a little bit more information. And uh, just another reason to go full frame if you need the detail.